She is the former child star with the violet eyes who grew up to become one of the greatest actresses of all time. I loved it. Every awful moment of it, I loved. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be remembering the life and career of the late Elizabeth Taylor. She was born on February 27, 1932, in Hampstead, London, England, to American parents. After developing an interest in the arts at an early age, she took up ballet at the age of three. Fearing rising hostilities in Europe, the Taylor family returned to the United States before the outbreak of World War II, when Elizabeth was just seven years old. While living in Los Angeles, Elizabeth's striking beauty was noticed by a family friend, who then suggested she be taken for a screen test. She impressed the executives at Universal Pictures, and they signed the 10-year-old for her debut role in 1942's There's One Born Every Minute. Next, MGM grabbed the young starlet for a seven-year contract and cast her in Lassie Come Home and several other secondary roles. Yet it was her starring role opposite Mickey Rooney in 1944's National Velvet that made her a box office sensation and a child star. Oh, you're a pretty one, Pie. You didn't mean to run away. Following this, she starred in Life with Father alongside such Hollywood heavyweights as William Powell and Irene Dunn. For the next decade, she continued to appear in well-received films. At only 22 years old, Liz Taylor was already considered one of the world's greatest beauties. Her on-screen appearance was enhanced by her dark complexion and by a genetic oddity that caused her to grow a double row of eyelashes. In 1955, she appeared alongside James Dean in the hit Giant. This was Dean's final picture before he was killed in a motorcycle accident that same year. This unfortunate event was followed by her involvement in 1957's overblown and critically panned epic Braintree County. Despite the film's shortcomings, she did garner her first Academy Award nomination for her portrayal of a Southern Belle. Over the next few years, she received several more Oscar nods. Her portrayals of Maggie Pollitt in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and Catherine Hawley in Suddenly Last Summer were two of her nominated roles. Her Oscar drought finally ended in 1960 when she won for her stunning performance as a call girl involved with a married man in Butterfield 8. I guess all I can do is say thank you. After bringing home the coveted statue, she took part in Cleopatra. This film was one of the most expensive productions up to that time, and it earned her a whopping million dollar salary. Am I to understand then that you feel free to do with me whatever you want? Whenever you want? Yes, I want that understood. Taylor won her second Oscar for Best Actress for her fine performance as the loudmouthed and unkempt Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. You're a monster. You are? I'm loud and I'm vulgar and I wear the pants in the house because somebody's got to. But I am not a monster! Signaling the peak of her career, she went on to star in dozens of theatrical films, television movies and TV programs. However, none approached the intensity or quality of her earlier work. At the same time, her personal life was riddled with love affairs, unsuccessful marriages, alcoholism, and health problems. These included a brain tumor in late 1997 and congestive heart failure in 2004. While she was best known for her acting, she was almost as famous for her many marriages. Taylor wed eight times to seven different husbands and was the mother of four children. Outside of performing, she was well known for her AIDS advocacy, her successful series of perfumes, and her vast jewelry collection. She continued to make occasional guest appearances in the media in the later years of her life, despite her failing health. A Hollywood legend, Elizabeth Taylor will always be remembered for bringing joy to many fans, championing social causes, and becoming one of the greatest legends of Hollywood's golden age.